So, do we already introduce ourselves? Should we do it again for real? Who's going to start? Peter. Hi, I'm Peter Chan, and I'm uh, the lead artist. He drew that pa painting right there. Right? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. Okay. I'm Larry Ahern, lead animator. You killed that bird. And I think that was a Leela scene. Oh, okay. She's the animal killer. <laughs> I like the mustache trees in that last shot, Peter. I'm Tim Schaefer, co-project leader of this uh, lovely game. And I am Dave Grossman, other project leader and designer and writer, along with Tim, of this lovely game. That should have been our titles, Co and Other. Co and Other, yeah. yeah. Clint Bajakian, one of the composers. Peter McConnell, one of the composers. Nice. The game has begun, you guys. Okay, so we saw the lovely, what was the name of that classical music that plays during the opening voice? Rossini, uh, William Tell Overture. It's the quiet part of the William Tell Overture. There's two classical pieces that mean mourning in cartoons. Yes, there's that one, and then there's... And the other one is... That's from... Where is that from? I don't remember. It might be Pierre Gint or something like... That's a good guess. It's not another place in the Rossini, is it? No, no, I think it's Pierre Gint. I think, I think... But for that opening scene with the music, we actually got the score and and yeah. and sequenced the the ink into the uh, MIDI sequencer. Mm -hmm. That was one of the big panning sequences, like wide pieces of art for the game. Oh, the room shot. It was a double room. Mm -hmm. And I noticed there's a poster with an L from Laverne and Shirley on that poster back there. <laughs> Here's one of our giant animation scenes. How did you lip sync back then? Because we didn't have any like tool. Nowadays we use a tool for lip syncing. Do you just by hand? I think get a we just like... timed it out like the old fashioned timing sheets. Now that was for the cinematics, but for in game, wasn't it Eric Wilmunder? I thought it just blah, 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 chatter. I think the in game was just on off with audio on off. Yeah, there's, there's no actual lip syncing for yeah. the, the majority of the game, so it's which just... is funny since I have gotten many compliments on the lip syncing for this game over <laughs> huh. the years. Because, you know, it loops around and every percentage of the time it's on, right? Well, because I remember Eric... Yeah, I think Eric designed a, a, some kind of an algorithm for making the, the lips move to the, vol the level of volume. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. It, yeah if there are pauses, waveform. pauses the waveform. in the audio, waveform, it stops yeah. moving the lips. Yeah. That's true. Now these credits were done by Kyle Balda. That's You're right. entirely on his internship? Yep. So wait, did we not pay for these he, credits? Uh, or did we pay for them? Time. He got paid, right? I think so, yeah. He took time, this is Peter, the other Peter. Um, we took time uh, out of CalArts. He came and uh, spent some time with us and we gave him this intro as an internship and he did a, a fabulous job. Seems like a funny thing to do, like, uh, Hey, you're an intern, you've never done this before. Do you want to do the entire animated <laughs> intro, the most... But I remember <laughs> when uh, he did, you know, when he finished something, he shared it with us. We were all blown away by it. Yeah, it was awesome. The most iconic <laughs> signature piece. Can yeah. you hurry and finish that before you go back you to want school? You set the entire right. tone for the look of our game and... It was excellent. It was awesome. I would, I would later learn that that was the perfect, this was the perfect piece to have Kyle work on uh, because he was colorblind, as it turns out. I didn't know that. I, I didn't saw know. him working I on something else and he had other people picking his colors for him. Oh, interesting. There was another 3D artist we had there in B building that was colorblind too, and it was one of those things where people were just kind of, have you noticed everything he does? The reds don't make sense or whatever? I couldn't remember what it was. Oh, the cow. I always get really happy watching these credits. I like the stretchy cow neck. That cow should have showed up again later somewhere. Yeah. <sighs> missed opportunities. What if the cow had come on their journey with them? Everything would have been so different. Well, here's you know? the story explanation right now for why the cow doesn't come. Because he's just tired. Doesn't want to make it's like a walk I've been to the, the mansion before. Now, this is the first fight I had with Peter McConnell. Do you remember this, Peter? Yes. I, I was going to mention that. You were going to mention that? You were going to remember it. Because the opening cutscene was too long, and we, and we always had a problem with too long opening cutscenes. And so we were like, let's split it in half and put an interactive sequence. So there's an interactive sequence that's about to start. But I seem to remember it was the wrong time of day for you because it's nighttime outside. It started in the daytime with the mutation scene, then it became nighttime. Right. But 
then what happened? That, then it turned into daytime at the end. That's what bothered you because the music couldn't make that transition in your mind. Yeah, I, I, well, I think mostly I was I was crabby because because you know we had to the, the, the cutscenes and the interactivity required a bunch of programming in iMuse, and I'd finished it one way <laughs> mm-hmm. and and then you changed it to another and so i think i came up with some sort of artistic argument that <laughs> had, had to do with daylight like that and and uh but, but that's an important thing to learn running a project to not change things after someone spent hours and hours making something well it was also an important to thing to learn that. not to step way out of your bailiwick and tell the the guy who's writing the scene how to write the scene <laughs> <laughs> oh well, there are bailiwicks all over the place in the <laughs> That one looks like it's from a local hardware store. Gee, Dr. Fred doesn't have a penny. Wow, it's from my favorite movie. Always make sure they get your good side. Hmm, there's something funny about that clock. Aha, a secret passage. This is all too easy. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world, had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. (laughs) Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred. What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity. Whoops. Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river. Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course. That's why I'll have to do it. Yesterday! To the time machine! This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children! The Chronogon! Da, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive. Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not. This is the first time I've ever tried it on people. Well, I'll be. And then there's the porta potties. 
uh, vessels. The chronogons. Yep. Chronogons. Chronogons. This, by the way, is an amazing full screen animation before it was possible to do full screen. Yes. And not actually animated. That's all. The background's all color cycling. It's all color cycling. <laughs> A lost art in the world of uh, I forgot about graphics. that. Now that computers work like they should, you don't have to do that stuff anymore. You know, if you look at Mark Ferrari's website, not that Mark Ferrari worked on this game, but he was the master of color cycling, and he has a whole website where he's done it in a more high-end way. Like like with high, higher res color cycling, he, get, he just kept perfecting that to higher and higher resolutions. Yeah, that stuff was crazy. He was into it, and then I think Bill Eakin was the one that inherited the mantle from him when he left. All the lava and Indy 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. See, color cycling. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, so that was like coming. two, three frame animations. And a little surf music for Hoagie. We always yeah. had a place for surf music in our games. That, the totally. bone wagon theme. Yep. That's right. I think that was, I think that surf music was yours. That was mine, yeah. yeah. I, did, I did that last little sequence there. Yeah, you know, the, the, the uh, musically, this, I believe, was the last project that we all worked on, to, certainly the last original title that we all worked on together, sort of equally as composers, where there was no lead composer, and we all pretty right. much panicked and freaked out together. Chief mail order jewels. What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. Oh, <laughs>